Hey folks, greetings. Now today, I want to talk about this Peter Lynch, uh, the guy that was involved in the summer riots, ended up committing suicide in prison. Sad story. Uh, I might touch on the Chris Cabba story as well, because it kind of links in in a way. Um, but yeah, those of you who don't know, Peter Lynch uh, was involved in the summer riots, uh, specifically the riot outside a hotel housing migrants where people tried to set it on fire. They threw things at police, just general rioting behavior now apparently peter lynch specifically wasn't involved in any violence um but he was on the front lines he was hurling abuse at police and uh, he got sent to prison for two years now is that harsh yeah i mean yeah it's very harsh um but that's what happens when your country descends into riots that's how you deal with it you swiftly send out severe prison sentences for those involved to deter people from uh, going to the next riots. Um, you know, this is nothing new. This happened back in 2011 in the London riots. Um, I didn't hear too many of your Tommy Robinson fanboys screaming, free speech, what about free speech? You're locking up people. I don't know. Maybe it's got something to do with it being predominantly black men that were involved in that. I don't know. But uh, no one seemed too bothered about it back in 2011. But everyone's kicking off now. Uh, you can't be sending this guy to prison for shouting at police. Now, um, like I say, was it harsh? Yeah, probably was harsh. But he knew what he was getting himself in for. The, the riots had been going on for a couple of days at that point. They were turning into violence. Uh, he knew there was a potential for arrest. He knew there was a potential for violence. He knew what he was getting himself in for. Now, like I say, two years in prison. Yeah, it's harsh. Of course it is. And it's sad. It's, it's truly sad. He didn't know what he was getting himself in for. Obviously, it, while he's in prison, he's never been around these sort of people. Hardened criminals. It was too much for him. And he ended up committing suicide. It's truly sad. It's a truly sad story. Um, but what your Tommy Robinson mob and Tommy Robinson himself is uh, coming out and blaming is uh, Keir Starmer. Now, there's a lot of things to blame Keir Starmer for in this world at the moment. But <laughs> ironically, the way he handled the riots, I think, was actually one of the things that he'd done quite well. He nipped it in the bud. Quick, decisive, severe prison sentences for those involved deterred people from carrying on and the riots stopped. This was actually one of the things that he'd done quite well while being Prime Minister, in my opinion. And ironically, the people that I'd blame for the reason that Peter Lynch ended up in prison and ended up committing suicide is people like you, Tommy Robinson. <laughs> I mean, look at this guy. So this is him at the riots with his placard. Davos, the WEF, the deep state, the globalist elites are trying to push multiculturalism on our society. They're trying to dilute the white people. You know this story. You know what's happened to this guy. This guy has been deeply entrenched in Twitter, on social media. He's been filled hate every single day in the algorithm by people like you, Tommy Robinson. Every single day in his algorithm, on his social media posts, all this absolute hate-filled garbage, these conspiracy theories, just feeding him hate and more hate every single day. I feel sorry for this guy, man. Look at him. Look at him there. Last days of his life. That's how he spent the last days of his life, just being filled with hate by people like Tommy Robinson. He should have been at home with his family. You know, if there was no internet, if there was no Tommy Robinson, this guy would probably have a nice hobby painting toy soldiers or something. I don't know. Uh, but it happens that he's gone down this algorithm, this uh, rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, of the WEF, of Davos, of the deep state. They're trying to murder and rape our children. All this garbage that has just been filled in his head every single day by the people of Tommy Robinson. So you're the person that I blame for this guy. And now you're trying to come out like you're his hero. You're probably, you're probably going to his family and say, his family should be fucking, yeah. <sighs> it, it, it just, it fills me with pain when I think that he, his family are probably holding up Tommy Robinson as some sort of hero now and not actually realizing that people like him are the reason uh, that Peter Lynch committed suicide. If he wasn't filled with hate every single day from him, he'd still be alive right now. Um, anyway, it's quite ironic that in the same sort of days, we had this story about Chris Cubber. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, he got shot while evading arrest 
Uh, he was unarmed, uh, but he was in a dangerous vehicle that was going back and forth, uh, nearly run over police officers. Uh, it's a sad situation. Now, we now know that this guy was a known criminal, attempted to murder someone a few days before. This was a, a, a not a nice man. Um, but I just find it quite ironic that uh, the Peter Litch situation, it's sad. He shouldn't have committed suicide. But when it comes to Chris Cabo, it's like, ah, he deserved it. He was evading arrest. He deserved to get shot. He didn't deserve to get shot. He got. He, he, he deserved to be arrested and take his punishment for the crimes that he'd done. Is there no such thing as a warning shot now? Maybe a warning shot into the car? Now, this story with Chris Cabo is, is, is a sad situation in a different way because it's, I mean, it's just sad that why have we come to this? Why have we come to the fact that we've got people with guns on the streets of London, we're having to more and more arm our police officers because, let's face it, the drug war, the drug gangs have got completely out of control. Why have we come to this situation? It's just sad. That's why it's sad. Uh, because these mistakes will happen. When you've got criminals on the streets with guns, when you've got police being more and more armed on the streets, shootings are going to happen. This is what we see in America every single day. Mistakes happen. Human nature happens. Shots are fired when they maybe shouldn't have been in the heat of the moment. The more these situations occur, the more mistakes are going to happen. And if you're going to hand over a multi-billion pound drug industry to criminals to run, this is going to happen. And it's sad that it's it's predominantly black males that are getting involved with this. Because like I say, if you just hand a multi-billion pound industry in London over to whoever can claim it, who's going to claim it? the poorest in society, the most impoverished in society. They've got the most to gain. So that's why it's predominantly young black males that are taking up the drug industry in London. And because it's unregulated, they'll shoot each other and kill each other over it. It's just sad. It's sad. It's, it's, it's preventable. It's completely preventable. If we legalise this stuff, if we regulate this stuff, take it out of the hands of the criminals and give people in those impoverished areas of London, proper opportunities, well-paid jobs, career prospects, opportunities to do something else. You take away that drug trade from them. We wouldn't end up with endless amounts of kids being shot and stabbed on our streets every single day. So the two situations are very sad in very different ways, really. I just think it's, it's sad. And just the, uh, just the pure ignorance and hate online that is, is, is fueling the misinformation about this stuff is, is tragic. It's really tragic. <sighs> anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the video, click a like. Um, new podcast channel up. Uh, I'd love you guys to go and subscribe. Uh, all my clips, I'm just doing a separate channel for my podcast now. So uh, all my clips from my podcast will be put up on there. If you can go over there and subscribe, it'll be fantastic. And until uh, next time, take care.